Welcome to the MOOCs course in Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Unit Operations and Other General Principles Applied in Chemical Industries. We will have a recapitulation of what we have seen in last couple of lectures. We have seen a few statistics of Indian chemical industries and then raw materials that are available in India. Then raw materials picture for India, then energy picture for India and then transport picture for India especially uh, with respect to the chemical plants supplying the material and then taking out of the uh, plant etc. Those things we have seen. Then we have seen a few uh, basics about chemical plants, how we can group them as a, uh, a combination of a few unit processes and unit operations. Then we have seen a few common uh, unit processes. In the last lecture we have also seen a few common unit operations. In this particular lecture we are going to see a few more uh, unit operations which are commonly used or found in many of the chemical plants and then we will be seeing a few general principles of uh, chemical engineering that are applied in chemical plants. So next unit operation that we are going to discuss are based on the solid fluid contacting operations. There are several uh, like a fixed bed, fluid bed or fluidized bed and then moving bed uh, operations. Fixed bed or fixed bed reactor for example most widely used type of reactor which is used with precious metal catalyst to minimize attrition losses wherein catalysts are usually in the form of pellets. So these fluidized beds are not only re used for reactions but also they are used for uh, some kind of heat transfer purposes as well. right? So let us say if you have a, a, a fixed bed used for a reactant, what is fixed bed if you wanted to visualize? Let us say you have a cylindrical column. Right? So, that particular column what you do? You pack with certain packing material. Let us say in this example it is catalyst particles or pellets, catalyst pellets. Right? At the bottom of the uh, bed and at the top of the bed uh, you compactly pack the bed using the uh, perforated plates and then whatever the uh, reactant feed gases are there they are allowed to pass through from the bottom and then uh, these gases passes through the perforated plate that are available uh, provided at the bottom of the bed then pass through uh, interstitial spaces between the catalyst particles and then reaction takes place. So then unreacted uh, reactants and products are again passed through the top perforated plates and then going out. From there you know there is a subsequent uh, purification operations take place etc. that is a different thing. right? So this is what uh, a common fixed bed reactor looks like. Okay. Now, if you have a kind of a fluid bed reactor or fluid as bed reactor, so then how does it look like? Let us say you have a column again, cylindrical column. At the bottom you what you have? You have a perforated plate like this, right? And then uh, this is the top of the column. So here you are not closing the top of the bed. Now rather bed what you have? You have a uh, uh, packing material now let us say catalyst like this which is not packed which is not packed initially right now this reactant gases or whatever feed is there that passes through the bottom and then uh, there will be a certain point where the uh, pressure drop uh, uh, whatever the pressure drop is there that is provided for this material flea, uh, feed to flow up you know that would be balanced by the drag force experienced by the uh, particles and then once this pressure drop overtakes the drag force then these particles start suspending like this. They will be under fluid like phase right they will be uh, behaving like a fluid particle like this. And then how much pressure drop or the flow rate should you should provide you should provide such as that this particle should not go out of the column right. So, and then whatever the products reactants are there they will be collected from the top and then you know subsequent operations should be done in general. This is one of the type of fluid bed of or fluid as bed reactors. The different types of fluid as bed reactors are also there that is what we are going to see right. So uh, here again uh, uh, similar like fixed bed reactors these reactors also fluid as bed reactors also used for uh, uh, some kind of unit operations where heat transfer to be done. Uh, they are also used for heat transfer purposes not only for uh, reaction purposes. Okay? So these fluidized bed uh, reactors used to contact finely divided solids with reactant gases in general. For example, cracking catalyst with 
oil vapors and then with air then used in roasting of sulphide ores to give oxides and uh, sulphur dioxide these are couple of examples for fluid as bed there are n number of applications right fixed bed reactors are also known as the packed bed reactors the bed is fixed or packed that is not moving that is what it mean by in the fluid as bed the bed is uh, moving the particles are fluidized okay so these uh, in inventions packed and fluidized bed inventions are a kind of uh, breakthrough in chemical uh, industries and then once uh, they have been developed a uh, huge lot of changes have occurred in chemical industries right one other kind of uh, fluid solid unit operations is moving bed reactor where it combines virtues of fixed bed reactor with ability to regenerate catalyst by movement to separate regeneration zone for example let us say uh, the pictorially if you wanted to see the moving bed so here we have a bed right so there is a perforated uh, plate at the bottom right from the top what we are giving we are giving catalyst actually initially the bed is packed with uh, catalyst particle or whatever defined particle that are supposed to be used for the packing now here we are taking reaction so catalytic bed we are taking so these are all catalytic uh, beds these are all catalytic particles right initially we are giving them uh, uh, from the top and then we filled up to certain height and then what uh, what we are doing these these reactions usually occur at high temperature sometimes high pressure also but let us take only temperature into the consideration to be consistent with the discussion so now these uh, catalytic particles are at certain elevated temperature when the reactant gas passes through from the bottom that gas interacts with catalyst particles and then uh, the reaction uh, takes place heterogeneous reaction takes place product gases are taken from the top through the gas outlet okay now during the reaction it is often hap happens that the catalyst may get uh, deactivated or it may be required to go some certain kind of regeneration processes so stopping the process and then again re uh, removing the bed regenerating them and in all that is not going to be efficient both from the technological uh, view points as well as from the economic view points of the plant okay so for that what we do in general uh, at the bottom there is a opening through which we can collect the catalyst particles right and then these uh, these particles are elevated to the top section again using the bucket elevator as we have discussed uh, bucket elevators in the previous class and then then we raise to the top of the reactor from here we put them back here again if you think that you know the regeneration are, uh, is required uh, for these particles so then you can take them through side stream to regenerator so since the bed uh, height is almost like fixed like a packed bed right but movement of the bed is there because periodically we are discharging and then putting in new catalyst so that uh, the height bed height maintains properly amongst the uh, fixed bed fluidized bed moving bed fixed bed reactor are having a certain advantage of you know uh, you know something like you know uh, getting better quality products etc so that's the reason people try to maintain such uh, such such characteristics by different ways but if you don't have the moving bed or you know uh, catalyst regeneration uh, portion properly then it is not going to efficient if you have only fixed bed then catalyst regeneration is going to be difficult because that's a batch wise you have to remove the bed regenerate the catalyst and then put them back you know that that becomes process in batch so whenever you have a batch process the efficiency is going to be less okay uh, the yield is going to be less in general right so the conversion if you wanted to increase if you wanted to make the process continuous so then it is better to have such kind of uh, provisions one other kind of a uh, provision for the you know uh, continuous uh, circulation of the catalytic uh, uh, you know uh, bed uh, or catalyst catalyst particle or circulating fluidized bed reactor so where what we have here whatever the fluidized bed is there right so perforated column is there and then uh, particles are there here catalyst particle right so at the top what you do whatever the outlet is there through the outlet you connect it to you know a cyclone separator like this so now the particles whatever uh, are there so you know so now this is the uh, 
column where we have a uh, bed of catalyst which is movable when we are giving the gas in our reacted uh, reactant scene. So, then gradually they will fluidize depending on the balance between delta p and then drag force experienced by the particles. Once the delta p uh, crosses uh, the drag force, the particles behave like a fluid particles and they will be fluidized like this. Now, if you further increase the uh, flow rate, what happens? These particles will go out of the reactor. Right. So, those you know what you do, those uh, particle going outside of the fluidized bed column, you know you take them to a cyclone separator. Cyclone separator uh, is an again a unit operation which is used to separate uh, fine droplets or fine very fine particles from the gases. So, now this gas is uh, including particles also, those particles you know when they uh, collected into the cyclone separators because of the you know centrifugal forces the particles are being hit to the wall and then the circulations will happen and when that move at the bottom when this particle reaches then the circulations will take place like this and then gases go out from the top almost pure gases go out uh, from the top whereas the solid particles are collected at the bottom. So, these particles in general collected in a regenerator this is nothing but regenerator. So, this in this uh, column the regeneration of the particles catalytic particles takes place and then once the regeneration is done. So, these things are fed back to the inlet of the you know uh, whatever the column that we are having here fluidized column. So, now here the catalyst particles are being circulated that is the reason this is known as circulating fluidized bed reactors whereas, the other model you know there is no circulation we are maintaining flow rate such a such a way that the particles are not going out of the column okay sometimes you need to have a kind of rapid or fast fluidation etc so under such conditions particles will definitely go outside so then so this kind of provision is better even if you don't not doing regeneration let us say if there is no reaction and there is no regeneration required then also if you wanted to uh, uh, if you suppose to protect or save if you suppose to uh, minimize the losses of the particles. So, then you have to go for this uh, circulating fluidized bed uh, system even if there is no reaction, right. This fluidized bed reactor uh, you may be thinking that the picture shown is here uh, shown here is slightly different than what I have drawn in the previous slide. So, this is actually same on, uh, this is actually similar one only. Only thing that uh, in the previous picture I have drawn only one particular level of uh, packing. Now, this packing you can do in multiple levels like this. In fact, this is going to be made, uh, more efficient, right. So, this is actually you know uh, uh, rather one bed you are having three bed and then all these three beds are connected like this, right. So, when the reactor uh, reactant comes into the uh, reactor through bottom, so this bed fluidizes and then the particles moves off. Similarly, uh, the gases moving to the next level, next bed level. So, then again the bed would be will be fluidized and then there would be reaction between the gas particle and then whatever the solid uh, solids are there here and then like that different levels it may happen. So, the catalyst may be uh, drawn into the reactor through the system here. First, it may be coming to the top one. So, then from the outlet of the top uh, bed, the catalyst particles are withdrawn and then sent to the second level like that you know till the bottom level it has been done like this. Only rather having as I mean like uh, in the previous slide I have shown a single bed now here uh, within a column we have three such bits all of them are connected and then being fluidized in a sequenced manner ok. Then fluid solid operations many are there some of them are uh, discussed here centrifugation, sedimentation, settling tank wet scrubber, crystallizer, etc. Then filters like rotary uh, filters, press uh, filter, plate and frame filter, uh, plate and frame filters, etc. Cyclone separators, electrostatic precipitators, bag filters, thickness or classifiers, etc. Centrifugation, it is used to separate very finely divided solids from liquids or liquids from liquid emulsions. In this section what happens you have a uh, ball mounted in another, another ball like this. So, inner ball in general is perforated sometimes, 
sometimes it is not right so what happens when you take the material inside and then you rotate the inner ball at certain rotational velocity then what happened because of the centrifugation force heavier particles whether they are fluids or you know solids if they are two liquids uh, then you know uh, you know heavier liquid particles if it is liquid solid then the solid particles would be attached to the outer wall because of the centrifugal force they will be rather attached they will be forced towards the outer wall and then collected as a kind of a you know uh, you know cake towards the outer wall of the outer container inner one is rotating outer one may also be rotating depends on application so this is what happens basically in uh, centrifugation all these equipment as i mentioned their uh, uh, detailed working principles advantages disadvantages and other, all other details you will be discussing or studying in different courses like mechanical unit operations mass transfers and then uh, heat transfers reaction engineering etc so here we are only giving a few details minimum details only so the same thing about centrifugation is pictorially shown here again then settling tank they are simple device to remove large particles from gas stream by settling in low velocity zone so we have a container here what we do particle laden gases whatever are they we allowed to come into this container so the particles are having you know uh, higher settling velocity uh, compared to the gas particles rather gas particles don't settle at all so those gas particles may, gas may be take collected from the top like this whereas the settled particles here you know they will be collected through the bottom discharge wet scrubbers effective means of removing suspended particles from gas stream by contact with liquid shower is done in this wet, wet scrubber so let us say in the same container here whatever we have so uh, we are here in the settling tank we are allowing the particle to settle on its own based on its settling velocity the settling velocity depends on the delta rho uh, viscosity of the fluid and then all that right so but now if you provide some kind of uh, liquid spray here then what happened this particles solid particles would be wet uh, quickly and then they will be collected at the bottom as a uh, wet cake kind of thing whereas the gas particles or the gas would not be wetted by the uh, liquid and then they will be you know collected from the top uh, you know uh, in a similar way so the same thing is shown here right we have a column from from the bottom we are giving or allowing a gas which is containing particles also right it is raising up and then from the top uh, we are spraying water liquid water uh, water or uh, liquid mostly water only so that this particle get wetted and then collected from the bottom whereas the clean almost clean gases are collected from the top crystallizer hot nearly saturated solutions are stirred and cooled to effect nucleation and crystal growth pictorially it is shown here they are widely used in inorganic salts cyclone separator used to separate solid particles of liquid droplets from gases are very fine uh, are very fine uh, solid particles from the gases to permit product recovery or to cut down product losses and air pollution in air pollution also or whatever the effluent gases uh, there from the industry you cannot put them or leave them in environment as it is because they may be containing several uh, several particles and then they may be harming the environment so then that uh, effluent gases air whatever is it that has to be purified through passing through the cyclone separator right so pictorially as i shown here so when the uh, particle laden gases comes here so they come at uh, certain high speed so then when they come here they hit here so then they lose lose certain amount of kinetic energy so they come here like this they they form a kind of a, a vortex like this and then moment they reach at the bottom they have some uh, the remaining uh, you know energy whatever is there because of that one they form a secondary uh, circulations or vortex form at the uh, center and then through which the clean gas goes out whereas when these uh, streams coming and hitting the wall so then when they hit the wall so the particles whatever are the droplets whatever are there they will lose their kinetic energy and they will be falling down like this and then from the um, uh, bottom will collect will be collecting the 
solids and then clean all or almost clear gases we are allowing to pass through from the top. Filter press, it is simplest type of uh, press filter and widely used, uh, pictorial it is shown here. Plates and fabric filter media may be made of a uh, variety of corrosion resistant materials. Rotary filters, vacuum applied to interior of drum pulls filtrate out of the cake. Used to separate minerals from slurries, pulp, fibers from water etc. So pictorially what you see, so let us say you have a uh, cylindrical drum like this, 2D visualization we are showing here like this. This drum usually a perforated one, it is a perforated one, there is a filter cloth, there is a filter cloth covering this particular uh, drum, right. Okay. Now what you do, uh, you apply vacuum inside the drum, this is rotating and then you apply uh, vacuum inside the drum, so then what happens? So then from this slurry tank whatever is there from here this is a slurry tank you know in which this drum is inserted like this so, and then you are you are uh, taking out the liquid from this uh, you know slurry uh, slurry tank so that you can get a concentrated cake and or a clear uh, liquid filtrate uh, both or both okay so now here so when uh, apply the vacuum the clear liquid goes through and then will be collected uh, inside the uh, cylinder and then through the exit this, cl this clear liquid is collected at the outlet you know filter cakes uh, forms like this. Unit operations are very essential part of mechanical unit operation course where you will be discussing you know what are they, what are the filter media and then what are their properties should be, what are the working place uh, principles, how to design them, what are the equipment available and all those things you will be studying in a different course. Electrostatic precipitators used to remove fine dust or miss or mist suspended in gases features high collection efficiency at wide variety of operating conditions. Pictorial it is shown here, so it is looks similar like you know whatever we have uh, cyclone separators etc. But only thing that here electrostatic uh, precipitation uh, precipitators are used. So then you have a charge column. So uh, different charges are there when the particles comes here based on the charge, charge differences the separation occurs whereas the clean gases are taken from the top. Thickener or classifiers used to separate slurry into sludge and clear liquid used widely in uh, mineral industries and sewage effluent clarifications. So they can be of batch process, they can be of continuous process like this. The continuous uh, thickener uh, one of the continuous, th continuous thickener is shown here pictorially. Batch thickener if you is nothing but simply a container, tall container in which you are allowing the slurry, in which you are, allow you are allowing slurry or pouring in the slurry and then you allow uh, for certain time. So after certain time what happens? All the solid fine particles should be settled at the bottom as a, as a kind of thick uh, uh, you know uh, slurry, so thickener. So and then above you have a clear liquid. After certain uh, certain time, you have above a clear liquid kind of thing. This is a batch process. Same thing occurs here, right? So but this occurs at a uh, continuous uh, mode, so that you know the uh, clear liquid as well as the uh, solid settled at the bottom are removed continuously, right? They are also uh, called as uh, you know sedimentation tanks. the process is known as the sedimentation. They are again based on the driving force, they are gravity sedimentation and then centrifugal sedimentation are all there. So that again you will be uh, studying in mechanical unit operations course anyway. Then bag filters is very simple process where batteries of tubular fabric bags are mounted. So solids may be removed continuously by flow reversal and mechanical shaking. So let us say you have a, a, a you know a column like this. Now what you have, uh, uh, you are you are having different uh, bags, fabric bags like this. One, two, three like this. A number of you can have. What you can give uh, input, you know, gas which are containing solid particles, solid particles of different uh, size, okay, different density. 
right. So, then uh, depending on the size and then density difference, these particles would be having different settling velocities, free settling velocity. Free settling velocity you might have seen uh, studied what it is. Like you know, if du by dt is equals to 0 or with the time the settling velocity u if it does not change then we call it as a uh, free settling velocity. Okay? So, what do you mean by it is? Let us say you have a uh, column right? in which let us say your particle you are releasing. This column is filled with some kind of solvent or liquid or whatever. So, gradually this particle settles in. So, when this particle is settling, so initial certain uh, region of uh, settling distance, the particles will have a different uh, terminal velocity so that du by dt will not become 0. At the bottom also similar kind of situation should be this where du by dt will not be 0, but in between there would be certain distance uh, the velocity uh, you know the velocity changes with respect to time would be 0. So, that that reason is known as the free settling reason and then the velocity uh, that particular velocity is nothing but free settling velocity. Right? So, this depends on the delta rho and then size of the particle and then uh, viscosity of the fluid in which settling etc. all those things. These details also you will be discussing in uh, mechanical unit operation course anyway. So, but basically what you understand if the particle is bigger if the particle size is bigger and then delta rho is uh, larger, so then such particles can uh, have a higher settling velocity. So, that, mom that means moment they enter in, so the particles which are having higher settling velocities they will be quickly collected or quickly settling at the moment they enter uh, the bags and then they will be collected here in a bag. Right? So, then here you can have the uh, uh, bigger particle or heavier particle. Let us say if density difference is same for all of them, so then probably the uh, bigger particles you collect here. So, uh, the particles which are having the uh, free settling velocity very small value, so they gradually you know lose their energy, kinetic energy and then they settle here at the last. Right? So, then here these particles you know are very fine or delta rho is very small for those particles. So, such kind of particles will be collected here and then in intermediate particles would be collected in between like this. So, these principles also you will be discussing in other courses. Next is the fluid storage equipment. There are uh, several uh, fluid storage equipments are there like gas holders, tanks, pressurized spheres, underground, underground caverns, etc. Uh, pictorial it is shown here. Let us say gas holders for low pressure gas storages of gases at constant pressure using liquid seal we use such kind of gas holders and then usually water liquid seal is applied and then pictorial it is shown here. So, whatever the uh, uh, low pressure gases that you wanted to store so that is what it is occupied here and then at the top of this one you have a kind of uh, uh, you know water liquid seal. Another kind of storage is simple tanks, storage of uh, liquids of all types can be done in these uh, kind of tanks. Usually they are stored at atmospheric pressure, may have floating roof. For example, they are shown here simple tanks in general you might have seen several tanks such kind of tanks. Pressurized spheres, for pressurized storage of liquefied gases or high vapor pressure liquids, these pressurized spheres are used so that to permit safe storage with no vapor losses, picture really shown here. Then underground uh, caverns used for large volume storage of liquids or of liquefied gases, picture really they are shown here like this. Okay? Next important unit operation is distillation. There are different types of distillations are there, so then we are going to see only batch and continuous distillation. Batch distillation used for intermittent operation and then handling small volumes of feed and product. Pictorially it looks similar like you know fixed bed reactor, but it is not like a, it is not a fixed bed reactor. So, whatever the feed actually distillation is used for a purification purpose. Let us say in the feed you have a, a methanol plus water. You have a plant where methanol has been produced, but it is not in pure form, lot of water is there. So, right after the uh, unit process you have this is the product. So, this one you wanted to purify this probably you can take to the uh, uh, 
distillation column and then you apply temperature such a way that you know one of the component which is uh, uh, more volatile you know the temperature should be lower than the boiling point temperature of a more, vol a more volatile component or close to the boiling point temperature of a more volatile component so that more volatile component can uh, evaporate quickly and then that forms a kind of a distillate. Here at the top again we have a condenser and then in the condenser that um, which is uh, in the condenser the vapors are being condensed. Now since this temperature operating temperature is at the boiling point of more volatile component or close to the boiling point of more volatile component, most of the vapors containing more volatile components. So then more volatile components are uh, collected from the top through condenser as distillates whereas the uh, less volatile components are collected from the bottom as a residues. So let us say in this case if you have methanol water so the distillate is uh, pure in methanol and then residue is pure in water. How pure is depends on your operating conditions and then and all that right. So let us say initially you have 50 versus 50, 50 by 50 ratio then here methanol may be uh, 90 to 98 percent or even more and then here water may be uh, 90 to 98, 95 percent or something like that Le uh, remaining small amount is methanol here remaining small amount is water like that. So it is more concentrate more purified methanol you get it. So this is what happens in distillation. Then continuous uh, distillation or continuous fractionator for high volume continuous uh, separation of complex mixtures. Uh, these are used such as in uh, petroleum fractions, connect these with appropriate pumps, reboilers, condensers and automatic controls etc. What are these reboilers, condensers? They are again uh, other kind of uh, unit operation that we are going to see. Let us say pictorially if you see we have a feed and now this fractionator is having different you know sections so that you know high volume of the feed can be taken and then different cut fractions may be collected in addition to simple distillate and then uh, residue unlike in batch uh, distillation in between you can get a different uh, cut fractions of the, you know different product qualities like that that is also possible in petroleum crude you know when you do the distillation uh, or fractionation like this you know there are different uh, components are possible to get like you know uh, petrol uh, diesel and then kerosene and then naphtha etc. These kind of things are possible. So they may be collected like this in different fractions. Okay, one fraction may be uh, pure in petrol, another fraction may be pure in diesel, another fraction may be pure in uh, kerosene like that. Okay, the similar kind of representation uh, is given here as well for a uh, continuous fractionation, continuous fractionators. They are all representation. They are not uh, true. Uh, schematic of any of the distillation or any of the unit operations. As I mentioned at the beginning of the week, they are a, a representation only, they are a repre schematic representation only. Extraction, liquid liquid extraction and solid liquid extraction are possible. In the liquid liquid extraction, they are used to contact solvent and feed to give raffinate and extract, widely adapted to removal of naphthenes from uh, lubricated. Uh, from lube oil fractions using solvents such as furfural, pictorial it is shown here. Solid liquid extraction which is also known as the leaching, it involves in removal of a solute from a solid by means of a uh, liquid solvent, often used in ore treatment to recover a metal values etc. So whatever the distillation and previous slide that we have seen and then extraction this slide we have seen, this, these topics you study in mass transfer operations right which you may be studying in 5th or 6th semester of your UG course. Gas liquid contacting absorption for taking up a soluble gas, soluble gas in a solvent liquid and producing a solution plus a clean exit gas we are using this absorption right such as used in H2S removal from hydrocarbons, hydrocarbons usually also contain H2S because petroleum crude whatever uh, uh, we have the sulphur components would also be there. One of the uh, common reaction uh, in, uh, in petroleum industry is that 
hydro treatment of uh, different types of crudes when you do the hydro treatment so then this uh, H2S will also form and then that has to be removed. A removal from hydrocarbons if you wanted to do you have to do the absorption right. So pictoriality is shown here. Next is stripping, stripping is opposite of uh, absorption. What does mean by opposite of absorption? Here it is used for removing a soluble gas from solution from solution which is containing gas also. If you wanted to remove uh, a gas which is already dissolved in a solution then you know you have to you will be doing the stripping by counter current contact with an inert gas. It is used to recover solute gas and regenerate solvent for subsequent absorption steps in general. Okay. Pictorial representation is shown here. These two topics also uh, discussed in thorough in uh, mass transfer operations course. Heat exchangers, there are different types of heat exchangers are there. One particular type of heat exchanger which is very common is a, a shell and tube a heat exchanger. Others are like fire heater, reboiler, condenser, jacketed kettle, direct mixing or quenching etc. So fire heaters to heat petroleum fraction to distillation or cracking temperature in direct fire tubes it is used, pictoriality is shown here. A reboiler uses natural circulation to circulate fractionating tower bottom in heat exchange with steam example to provide necessary heat for fractionation pictorially if you see. So this is the fractionator this column which is not completely shown now here the uh, um, reboiler is important so this is reboiler actually. So whatever the uh, residue that you have from the bottom that you collect and then pass through the reboiler and then where you are providing certain amount of steam etc. So that to heat it again and then that particular after passing through the reboiler that will be fed back to the fractionator column, fractionation column. Actually fractionation column is very tall, very big and then reboiler is uh, very small uh, in comparison to each other. So but however now here we are talking about reboiler so it is shown in a uh, bigger size. Condenser, usually water cold tubular construction to provide reflux and overhead product from fractionating column these are used. So the at the top whatever the distillates are there, so vapors whatever the uh, more volatile component vapors are there they are passed through a condenser uh, where water cooling tubular construction is provided so that you know actually um, the gas passes through here like this whereas the water. Uh, cold jacketing tubing is uh, provided something like this here. So water, cold water in is passed through here and then when the hot vapors comes through here so the heat transfer takes place so then uh, cold or uh, you know condensate taken from here whereas the hot water out is taken uh, from the here out like this. So this is a continuous continuously cold water is uh, provided so that sufficient uh, you know uh, condensate, condensation can take efficiently. Okay? So then whatever that is not being uh, collected as product that can also be sent back to the fractionator again. Another representation of uh, same condenser is provided here. Shell and tube heat exchanger, common type of device for process heat exchange, pictorial it is shown here. Jacketed kettle, common construction for reaction kettles, water or brain may be used for cooling, hot water, oil or dothem for heating is used in general. So let us say what we have, we have a reactor vessel like this, this is the reactor vessel and then whatever the uh, reactant that you wanted to uh, uh, react with or the provider they are taken here. There is a kettle, kettle like this, jacketed kettle is I mean is there so that is jacketed like this. So through this one you supply like you know water or brine or hot water, oil etc. So that required a, uh, energy may be transferred to the contents that are present inside the container like this, very simple. Direct mixing or quenching features intimate contact of coolant fluid example water with process gases to give quick quenching. In a chemical process industries there are several gases are there, hot gases are there which may require to cool down immediately or as faster as possible under such condition this direct mixing or quenching is carried out. 
for example, in hydrocarbon pyrolysis to acetylene production. Membrane separations, there are different types of membrane separation processes are there uh, like you know microfiltration, ultrafiltration, nanofiltration, dialysis, electrodialysis like several types are there. So, some of them based on the size, some of, some of them are based on the delta P, some of them are based on delta C, some of them are based on the uh, uh, delta charge whatever electromagnetic force difference differences are there. So, EMF, delta EMF etc. those things are the driving forces right we can we are not uh, going into all details in fact membrane separation itself is one separate course probably taken as uh, course one single course so we see a couple of uh, uh, membrane separation processes here so one is the dialysis to separate materials in solution having widely different molecular weights caustic from sugar or cellulose etc pictorially shown here gas diffusion also similar way uses microporous uh, barriers, let us say nickel barriers like you know nickel plate is there which is having the uh, porous structure which is very small uh, micron size or even uh, smaller. In multipurpose operations the such kind of barriers are used so that gas diffusion can take place. It is, it is used like you know for example to separate light uh, uranium 235 F6 from heavy uranium 238 F6 components pictorially they are shown here. So, these are a few type of uh, common unit operations that we may uh, encounter in majority of the uh, uh, chemical plants right. So, till now what we have seen uh, chemical plants what are the unit processes and then what are the unit operations that are very common in most of the chemical plant that is what we have seen right. So, next week what we do we start discussing on production of different types of inorganic chemicals. So, there you may be seeing in flow sheets different types of this unit operations or unit processes may be uh, occurring right. So, but however before going into those details what we see, we see a few general principles of uh, chemical engineering which are uh, more essential uh, from the chemical uh, plant viewpoints right. So, it is again huge uh, amount of information like uh, if like you know, uh, you know entire chemical engineering is, is useful in chemical plants. Right, so including process control kind of uh, subjects, optimization kind of subjects, etc., are also be used most of in most of the chemical plants. Right, so but we cannot discuss all of them. Right, so but however, before going to see uh, production of certain kind of uh, chemicals, inorganic chemicals, it is uh, rather important, uh, rather directly going into the production details of such chemicals it is very essential to have a kind of recapitulation of some of the important chemical uh, principles or some of the important principles of chemical engineering that are very essential uh, in chemical industries. General principles applied in studying an industry, large number of principles of science and engineering are being used in any chemical industry, discussing all such principles is out of scope as I mentioned. However, many complicatedly interrelated aspects that are essential to any chemical industry are provided below like market and sales provide justification of the industry. That is very essential, very essential a prayer of chemical engineering knowledge right. You have all chemical engineering knowledge and then you can uh, successfully install a plant and then pro produce the material but there is no market then there is no use at all ok. Then methods of production, in the methods of production what are the important things that you uh, feel to have a kind of information a priori like chemical reactions, process flow diagrams or flow sheets, then materials or material requirements etc. These things are very essential from the methods of production viewpoint. Okay? Then chemical engineering problems where manufacturing and economics should also be considered. Now, what we see they are you know very wide. So, one is chemical engineering problems talking about uh, manufacturing and economics, other one is talking about talking about market and sales, another one talking about the uh, reactions and then flow sheets and then materials etc. So, they are very different from each other. So, they are complicated and interrelated as well. Okay? So, interrelating complexities of such aspects can be reduced to problems which can be solved on basis of principles of science and engineering. We will see what are those uh, 
you know, principles of science and engineering that are important, only a few of them that we are going to see. One is the chemistry is important, next one is the thermodynamic information is important, reaction kinetics is very essential uh, for any chemical plant, then process and mechanical design. Design of the plant is usually uh, two types, one is the process design where you use the all chemical engineering principles, Make another one is the mechanical design where you use uh, some of the mechanical engineering information like construction material, you know thickness of the material, uh, rea uh, react thickness of the material that is used for constructing a unit operation or reactor etc. those kind of things are uh, uh, coming from mechanical design point, so uh, those things are also important. Then economics is very essential, that is also important. Concepts of unit operations and unit processes are anyway very, very important. That is the reason, you know, uh, you know, four, three to four semesters of the uh, UG courses are dedicated to different types of uh, unit operations and unit processes in chemical engineering. So, we see a few basics of them, rather going in detail of each of them is not possible. So, we see only a few details. Coming to the chemistry, all types of chemistry are usually involved in chemical industry like analytical chemistry, physical chemistry, inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry. Chemical reactions are very important for conversion and yield data obviously. Then analytical chemistry why it is used? Because it is used for process control, yield determination and optimization etc. Why it is important? For example, modern and electronic instrumentation such as uh, vapor phase, chromatography, infrared, NMR, etc. All, all of these are based on this analytical chemistry principles. And then we often use these, uh, you know, characterization techniques for analysis of the products, etc. in chemical plants as well as the chemical engineering laboratory. So, it is very essential. Next one is physical chemistry. It is integrated with chemical engineering operations in phase diagram studies especially for separation processes involve use of chemical kinetics and then catalysis. Then inorganic chemistry, it involves one or more reactions which do not contain combinations of C, H and O with or without other non-metallic uh, elements. Then organic chemistry, it involves combinations of C, H and O with or without other non-metallic elements. Okay? Large portion of commercial organic chemicals derived from aliphatic and aromatic compounds of petroleum are coming under uh, organic chemistry part in general. Next is thermodynamics, it is very essential part of uh, chemical engineering, why because it is a science which deals with relationships amongst various forms of energy and then without energy you cannot run any of the chemical plant, right. Definitely you need energy, so then energy calculations are very essential to understand, to understand uh, whether the process is, is thermodynamically uh, feasible or not. So, once you understand that, term for, uh, once you realize that process is thermodynamically feasible, then only you can take that process to industry level, okay. Examples of applications of chemical engineering thermodynamics are like chemical equilibria, then energy applications. Under chemical equilibria, we have ideal systems and then non-ideal systems. Ideal systems are usually at low pressures whereas the non-ideal systems usually at high pressures whereas the temperature may be variable in either of the system. In energy applications, heat of reaction and then work of compression and expansion of real gases are uh, very essential. So, thermodynamic functions and relations of energy uh, terms, if you uh, pictorially put uh, as a kind of bar diagram if you put what you can see, you can see let us say the enthalpy of the system enthalpy is the complete one. So, out of which only uh, uh, gives free energy is the free energy that is available, that is from enthalpy unavailable energy Ts if you remove then you get the free energy and then this free energy is also not useful energy out of which only some of them is useful for the total useful work. So, from here further if you subtract in addition to unavailable energy, if you subtract the external work PV then whatever the energy is there that is only total useful energy for the uh, given process, right. If you wanted to know the internal energy of the system from the enthalpy if you uh, remove this uh, external work, so then whatever the uh, uh, remaining is there that is nothing but internal energy. The references for today's lecture are provided here. This particular book is more 
suitable from the slides point of view that I have shown in this today's lecture. Thank you. Thank you.